Okay, <clears throat> new update on the aquaponics setup. Uh, if you compare this to my last video, you can see my, uh, these are uh, Sugar Daddy and Mammoth Melting Peas have gone bonkers. And YouTube user Casting H pointed out that I would need to build a trellis. So I did just that. I bought a package of uh, bamboo tomato steaks. I think that ran me two bucks. Unfortunately, they were uh, they were dyed heavily. I would have liked to have found. I thought they were green, but I know bamboo isn't this color <clears throat> naturally. I found out it was like a, a dye or paint, and I didn't want that going down in my water system. So what I did was I flipped a palm sander upside down on my lap and uh, hit them with some uh, 150 grit till they came down to the wood or most of the way and then I gave them a bath and uh, some boiling hot water. And bamboo is uh, water resistant wood in the first place so it's not going to rot. Um, the way I built this trellis was <clears throat> you can see there are uh, eight of these vertical stakes. Uh, the gap here is maybe I don't know, four, four inches. And then the uh, horizontal pieces just are woven in, like inner, outer, inner, outer, and then I switch on the next level um, to the opposite. And I haven't finished lashing them because I got bored. Um, <laughs> it's just a simple uh, lash. See no, camera's gonna focus on the background. But anyway, it, they're very simple to, to tie off. And then you tighten them with this center lash here. So just before you do this portion around the midsection that comes around to the other other side, that's when you uh, you would adjust your height. Uh, and spacing. At least that's what I found. <clears throat> um, since I'm doing all my plants from seedlings, I've noticed that these thicker stalk, these are cucumbers here, I'm definitely going to have to move those in the future. The, the uh, cucumbers and the peas have worked really well. Um, but the smaller stuff like this lettuce, basil, uh, broccoli, uh, red cabbage that's really prone to getting run over by uh, these hydrogen beads until their stalks thicken up what happens is the the beads can like if you inadvertently move one or whatever it, it can it can pinch the stock and boom your plants dead um, the other grow bed wasn't full last time, so over there I got peas, lettuce, I, I made this a little more sparse. Over there there's a, uh, I think that's summer squash or uh, zucchini or something like that. So, anyway, just a critique on this system. There's not a lot of grow bed space. I mean, this system is basically one-to-one. -one. The fish tanks 189 liters if it were full but it's not it's 10 gallons uh, shy of being full it's a 40 gallons out of 50 and and that makes up for the fact that the grow beds they're uh, 85 liters each with a good two inches of hydrogen missing but really that that doesn't <clears throat> matter because it doesn't add any more surface area to plant additional plants. I went with these uh, these deeper containers to give the roots more space. So uh, there's a good 10 inches of root growth area there on these. Um, oh, and another update that was interesting. The um, I came across, I, I was planning on getting catfish uh, 
from a hatchery in upstate New York, because I live down in Long Island, um, and they were going to have uh, finger, or well, five, six inch uh, channel catfish available, I think the first week of May or last week of April. And so I, I just stumbled across a pet store today that turned out to be like, they're, they're, the front end of the store is a pet store, but the rear end of the store is a, it's kind of like a distribution center where they take care of other people's fish, sell some of them if people happen to buy them. And anyway, the, the short and sweet of it is they had channel catfish. Albeit four times the amount I can get them from the hatchery, but I don't have to drive to Cooperstown and pay, uh, you know, thirty dollars in tolls and you know who knows how much in gas. Not to mention eight, nine-hour car ride. Well, anyway, there's all the goldfish down there. There's I had uh, some fatalities. <laughs> Most of these goldfish are just like, <clears throat> you know, uh, 15 cent PetSmart comets, except for the ones that I ha used to have in my my uh, six gallon. There's one of them right there. He's larger. Um, I had two goldfish in a six gallon fish tank that got added to this, and the rest of them I went and got eight, uh, you know, 12 cent goldfish from PetSmart or whatever. There's one of the cats. And um, the, <laughs> one of them, I think it was the very next day I brought it home, one of them had jumped out. And anyway, I, I found him here <laughs> on the floor because I was adjusting that drain over there. And he committed suicide. And then today there was another floater. So <clears throat> from PetSmart I got eight fish and two are dead 25 percent mortality rate so anyway I, I went out because my ammonia levels uh real real low i mean you know i get these little tiny uh goldfish and 40 gallons of water uh, i did all the ph tests and ammonia tests and nitrate nitrite and all that and basically it was a zero reading for everything except ph i'm running um, pretty alkaline, actually, it was about a 7.6, 7.8 reading. But, I got three catfish in there. It was all I could stomach because they were like $4 a piece. Uh, the hatchery was going to sell them to me for a buck a piece, so I think I'm still going to honor that, but I don't know. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to point out, the aerator that I'm using, that is a, uh, a dual, I'm sorry, a, it's a swivel head faucet aerator. I think I still have the package over here. The O-rings are right there. Here's the air, here it is. Dual thread swivel aerator. Uh, what I did was I took the collar off of it, I hacksawed the collar off of it, or otherwise convinced it to come off, and if you can see right up, right up here on top, the swivel portion of it made a great uh, hose barb. So, anyway, what I had on there previously was I simply took a, a two inch piece of uh, tubing, and I found a piece of hydrogen that just barely fit inside there like so and then I jammed one of these pins through the bottom and the top and then this end I put on the uh, the hose barb and you know what for 250 or whatever that aerator cost me this worked just as good um, So, I think that's it. I have not gotten that loop vent on. Someone asked what that was. They were interested in what that was. A loop vent, <clears throat> the drain portion of a loop vent looks like this. This would be the down, the tailpipe coming out of the grow bed, and this would be 
the downspout into the tank. Oh, and also, uh, Bluesy25 suggested that I add those downspouts on my drain, and he was correct. They significantly reduced the spray, and uh, I was apprehensive to do so because my line of thinking was it was going to cut down on aeration of the water, but as you can see, it does not. Uh, in fact, those downspouts, <clears throat> because they're uh, restricting the orifice, they help with the siphon break. So, thanks to Cassin for reminding me about the trellis, and thanks to Boozy25 for the downspout idea. Alright, I'm out.